hummingbirds are frequently called the jewels of the bird world for their bright glittering colors and tiny size. Many of the species featured in the Peterson Field Guide are practically as rare as jewels, too. Of the 19 hummingbird species that occur regularly in North America north of Mexico, just eight have ranges that extend beyond the boundaries of the desert southwest. Found only in the New World, hummingbirds reach their greatest diversity in the tropics. They include the smallest birds in the world. Our calliope hummingbird is barely more than three inches long, its bill accounting for a high percentage of that. But don't let their small physical size fool you. Hummingbirds are powerful flyers. Many migrating ruby-throated hummingbirds traverse the entire Gulf of Mexico in a single, long, overnight flight. They do not hitch rides on the backs of geese or other large birds. Hummingbirds are not as tender as you might think, either. By going into a lowered metabolic state known as torpor, they can survive temperatures near or even below freezing. Rufus hummingbirds breed all the way north to Alaska. Far from being helpless waifs, hummingbirds are often quite pugnacious, especially when defending a reliable source of food in the form of a patch of nectar-rich flowers or a hummingbird feeder. Hummingbirds rarely seem to stop moving and can be difficult to observe. Beating their wings at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per second, hummingbirds are able to hover in place and even fly backwards. They might appear to the unobservant eye to be nothing more than a large buzzing insect. Conversely, some sphinx moths are surprisingly hummingbird-like in their flight style and foraging methods. If a closer look at a supposed hummer reveals antennae, a fuzzy-looking body, or visible legs, you've got an insect and not a bird. Male hummingbirds are typically more brightly colored than females. Many have bright, iridescent throat patches called gorgettes. Males use these colors, which flash brilliantly at specific angles, but appear dark from other perspectives, both in courtship displays and in territorial encounters. The directionality of their iridescence allows them to send highly targeted visual signals to rivals or to potential mates, yet remain conspicuous to predators. Some male hummingbirds, such as broad-billed, violet-crowned, and buff-bellied, lack the contrasting gorget colors, but have brightly colored bills or patches of color on the head or face. Many male hummingbirds perform spectacular zooming flight displays, sometimes accompanied by twittering calls or wing whistling. Such behavior may have territorial or courtship functions. After fertilizing the female's eggs, a male hummingbird has no further role in breeding. Females build the nest, incubate the eggs, and feed the young. They also tend to be drab green and gray, perfect camouflage during the nesting season. The long, slender bills and tongues of hummingbirds allow them access to nectar deep inside flowers, far beyond the reach of typical insect pollinators. Most of the native nectar-producing flowers that hummingbirds prefer are bright red or orange in color, non-fragrant, and tube-shaped. Flower nectar is high in sugar, which fuels hummingbirds' high-energy lifestyle. But hummingbirds don't survive on nectar alone. They also catch lots of insects, often simply snapping them up in flight, and sometimes gleaning them from spiderwebs. During the past few decades, the increase in the use of nectar-producing plants in landscaping and the growing number of active hummingbird feeders being kept out in fall and winter has resulted in more western hummingbird species being discovered wintering in the east and along the Gulf Coast. It's no longer unusual for several different western hummingbird species to be regular visitors to bird feeders throughout the winter months, when most hummingbirds are supposed to be in the tropics.